Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I have Rivers, Reputation, Event Updates, as well as some statistics on Xenothreat 2.0 that you may find interesting. But a lot of stuff's coming in Alpha 3.17 that we didn't really know about, or at least starting to. Star Citizen Alpha 3.17 will have its first river on planet Microtech. Rivers will be locations of natural beauty, but also exploration and a place to find harvestables and valuables. Over the last year, Cloud Imperium have been building up River Tech. They wanted to have it out in Alpha 3.16, but it needed a bit more polish. Object scattering was improved, so they can have appropriately dense, lush flora around rivers. This is made possible by um, having on-demand spawn points around rivers, so um, basically um, more areas where trees are likely to spawn in the procedurally assisted tech. There is a huge amount of work that went into various parts of the river tech, like spline, mesh building, having rivers look natural as they sort of work their way through terrain and pathfind towards the sea from a mountain. Uh, you can walk into rivers as well in 3.17, also oceans and water with a helmet on without dying, so you can do a little more exploring. It's not an ideal solution. I believe Cloud Imperium are working on better animations and swimming, uh, but I'd rather have the ability to go into the water and have a look and not instantly die, rather than die when the water gets to a certain height. Exploring is better than no exploring. Uh, you can also now drive Gravelo vehicles over water, so rivers and oceans. There are various harvestables by rivers too, so it's worth I'm searching and looking around them. Uh, the lighting from rivers and effects are pretty cool looking. They sort of have all the diffused, reflected rays of light um, sort of on vehicles and nearby objects. You can expect oceans to improve over the next few patches as well. There are assets and things there in oceans, but they haven't had the time to really go in, update and polish those areas uh, for being able to now walk in them. So sort of bear that in mind. Um, also, don't take your helmet off when you're in the water. That's madness. For the future of rivers, you're going to be able to put objects in a river and then have them flow downstream. That's that's pretty cool as well. We can have races with little rubber ducks and things. Uh, they are also going to be doing some more work to the foliage shader that will allow for more varied and seasonal plants and um, that's going to be used across planets, but you can obviously expect to see a more aquatic or river-based flora and fauna in the future that uh, will make use of, of these sort of things. They want rivers or oceans and the different biomes to be diverse and um, sort of have appropriate assets there. Uh, they want the rivers to be mostly automated as a process when they're building them as part of their procedurally assisted design and um, where they could potentially have hundreds of rivers on a planet with very little input from a dev beyond we want this many rivers on these biomes. Bam! Make make it happen and um, procedurally assisted planet tech. Uh, this first river on Microtech will have to be found in game so there aren't any quantum travel markers for it but I suspect we'll be able to find it pretty easily as we're flying around in spaceships. Uh, rivers are a big step towards roads and lava rivers as well, lava flows um, too. So we have that to look forward to, hopefully a little later this year. We do know that they want lava rivers for the pyro. So I'm interested to see what implementation they're going to have for roads in the sort of first um, iterations because I suspect it will be connecting outposts together across planets. But we'll have to suppose uh, wait and see because they're not going to have purely straight roads. Well, maybe they will in some cases, maybe there will be some highways, um, but I suspect it will start off as more um, flat dirt roads or um, flat um, basic roads that are a bit more curved. Basically rivers, but for traveling without water. Let's talk about some improvements that are coming to the reputation system as well as the future of dynamic events and hostility. Faction reputations in game are currently static, so you can't be like friends with the pirates or reputationally an enemy with security. They don't automatically know um, if you don't have a sort of um, criminal rating that you are an enemy. Also, with current hostility, sometimes friendly fire or a stray shot or bug can mean that you are targeted by players and NPC law enforcement unfairly. Reputation is going to start to drive hostility. Have a good enough reputation with the Nine Tails Pirates, they won't attack you anymore. Um, have a very good one with them and they may come to your aid and defend you. If you start committing too many crimes or drive your reputation with the security forces or 
particular security forces in the standard system and below a certain level, those security forces will shoot you on sight or may even try and hunt you down in certain areas, which may be pretty bad if they control the stations and planets in that area. If you have a good rep with someone, they are going to have a greater threshold before um, they count you as a hostile or hostile to them. So um, you can shoot them a few times by accident and they'll be like, ah, well, he obviously didn't mean that. He's helped us out for years. This is a nice uh, solution because Clan Imperium don't want the sort of ability to abuse a system where they go, well, actually, we're just, we'll make it a, a lot just harder to friendly fire in general um, because people will abuse that and there'll be certain things you can do. But if you have to actually build up reputation, um, these people are going to be like, well, there's no way that this guy's attacking us on purpose. And if for some reason you do build up a reputation just so you can attack a security guy um, for a few more seconds before they attack you, well, yeah, fair, fair play. But I don't want to be doing the Xeno Threat um, 3.0 or the next Xeno Threat 4.0 uh, missions, accidentally hit a teammate a couple of times and then be a criminal. These updates are sort of starting to appear in 3.7, but are largely going to be invisible to the player because it's more sort of the back-end tools and the ability to do a lot of this stuff. So they're going to be building them up a lot more for Alpha 3.18 and beyond. Then those updates for reputation will start to be a lot more obvious. Now, we could see future Xenothreat events have players be able to be on the side of Xenothreat with this, both um, as an additional part of the mission, but also um, factionally. They hope that these improvements will make Jump Town better, um, make the event more fun, and patch some holes in it. They're also building criminal missions, so there is a lot more content for criminal and outlaw players, because they've been wanting to put that in for a while. Obviously, it's much more focused on um, the sort of lawful uh, or neutral uh, gameplay at the moment in Star Citizen, especially with its missions, and they want to expand that out, so there's a lot more to do. They are building future dynamic events with these improvements all in mind, so you can expect factional warfare and choosing sides in a lot of the future events. I suspect this is all in preparation for Pyro and the three major factions there that are at war and having a lot of interesting things to do in Pyro when it first comes online, maybe potentially later this year. Let's hope that we get Alpha 4.0 at the end of the year. However, um, that is a, a hope and a dream currently, rather than any form of confirmation. We also had a Xeno Threat debrief that gave us some interesting stats on the hybrid cargo transport uh, defend and fleet battle event there. Over 880,000 crates were delivered from the wrecked Starfarers to Jericho Station successfully, um, helping resupply that javelin there. Over 18,000 Idrises were destroyed. There was almost 5 million Xenothreat ships and NPCs killed and 60,000 PvP player kills. The deadliest ship uh, for kills is the Constellation Andromeda, followed by the Redeemer, Vanguard Sentinel, Hurricane, Cutlass Black and then Gladius. Uh, the Avenger Titan is the most destroyed player ship, followed by the Cutlass Black, um, I'm assuming because they're so numerous in game. Um, but this was then followed by the Constellation Andromeda. So. Although the Andromeda might be quite deadly, it's not going to be the best for kill-to-death ratio, I don't think. The Panther Repeater was the most commonly used weapon, followed by the Rhino and Badger. These are just laser repeaters. Laser repeaters all the way of different sizes. I think it's interesting to see that data, though I would like to know how many times the Javelin got killed and how many kills the Idris and Javelins got. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool to, to know. 5 million, or what, almost 5 million PvE kills is a lot, right? Anyway, Alpha 3.17 should be going into testing in the next few weeks, and I'm getting hyped for rivers, along with expanded selling, ship-to-ship -ship refueling, and a load of other features too. But what do you think? Are you surprised by rivers starting to come with Alpha 3.17? Is walking into a water cool or a bit silly without more animations or swimming? Did you participate in Xenothreat? What did you think? What about the uh, Nine Towers lockdown and jump down events? What features are you most looking forward to with Alpha 3.17? What ship do you have in game or fly the most? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I am French and sophisticated. I am also French and also sophisticated. Let us go on a date. Neither of these people are French or sophisticated. It was me doing a funny voice as well as showing the horrors of dating online and what happens if you accidentally catfish yourself with two of your own accounts. 
But French people don't talk like that even. No one does. NordVPN can make you appear to be in France, but it doesn't make you French, as I've now found out. It can be used to improve security or give you more accessibility to the internet. I can watch all my favourite shows. Get yourself NordVPN today in the links below and maybe be a better version of yourself. Now that's shilling for you. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway, and March is no different. We have a Crusader Industries Mercury Star Runner. This multi-crew, multi-roll, cargo and data running ship is my favourite ship in the game. It has loads of smuggling holes, it's got a good amount of armament, it can do a little bit of everything in the game at the moment. To be in for a chance of winning it, just comment on any of my videos made during March. More details in the description below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and potentially even clicking that join button under my videos to help further support the channel. Share the videos around with your friends and family. You'll occasionally get exclusive videos, posts, and polls that help influence the channel along with emotes and badges to show your support. It really does help. There's also a Patreon and direct donations tool for those inclined. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you have a great March 2022.